Today we are going to know how can we detect carbon and hydrogen or the presence of carbon and hydrogen in organic materials. So we will set up an apparatus like that and in this test tube we will have uh, copper oxide plus organic uh, material. Whatever the organic material was, like plastic, like a paper cloth, any substance that contains organic matter. We will expose this mixture to a flame, so it will be heated, a certain gas will be released, it will pass through this bent tube till it reaches the uh, lime water here. A change will occur to the lime water which will indicate what uh, compound or what uh, element is found in the organic matter. Plus, here in the swelling of the bent tube, uh, we have anhydrous copper sulfate. Anhydrous copper sulfate. Anhydrous means that it doesn't contain any water or it's not um, bound to water at this moment. And the color of the anhydrous copper sulfate is white. Also, its color will change, indicating the presence of a certain element. So, simply what happens is, uh, we put the copper oxide so that we can use the oxygen here. So, two reactions will occur. One with carbon and one with hydrogen. Because when the organic material is heated, carbon and hydrogen will be released. The carbon will react with the oxygen of the copper oxide, giving us carbon dioxide. So uh, here we have two moles of carbon of copper oxide plus carbon gives us carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide passes through the tube, goes to lime water. Of course, uh, the lime water, instead of being clear, it will become turbid or milky. So this is the um, effect of carbon dioxide on lime water. So when it becomes turbid or milky, we know that carbon dioxide is present, or in other words, carbon is present in the organic material. And for hydrogen, also the hydrogen will take the oxygen of the copper oxide, giving us uh, water vapor. So here we have two moles of hydrogen and one mole of copper oxide. It will give us water or water vapor. When the water vapor passes above the anhydrous copper sulfate, it immediately changes into hydrous copper sulfate. It bonds to the water, forming hydrous copper sulfate, which is known for its blue color. So it's blue crystals. So instead of being white, it becomes blue, indicating the presence of water, or in other words, the presence of um, hydrogen. So this is how can we detect the presence of carbon and hydrogen in organic materials. This is it for today, and until the next time, I thank you for watching, and see you.